In this video, I'm going to teach you all things audio for Corel Video Studio 2022. Simple things from moving the audio from the left speaker to the right speaker. So if you're an absolute beginner, then this is the ideal tutorial for you. Video Studio makes it quite easy to edit your audio and I will show you just how easy it is. Let's grab a clip and drop it onto our main track. In version 2022, you immediately can see the WAV format. You can edit directly within this, but I'm going to show you a much better way to do so. Right now, we're in the clip mode. If I was in the project mode, what that would actually mean, if I have multiple tracks or clips on multiple tracks, they will all play at once. If I just want to play a singular clip, I just highlight that and it goes into clip mode. The advantage of the clip mode, I get a new option and that's video audio. If I go into the project, that option is not available, so we must stay in clip mode only. We go into the audio. Now we zoomed in on the WAV file and here I can make a much better edit. We're going to use this scrubber here and not the one on the timeline. If I did use the one on the timeline, it goes back to project and this is not what I want. So let's go back to clip, back to the audio file. Let's say I want to make a direct cut here. All I need to do is drag my scrubber, or also known as the current time indicator, right to that point here. And I'm going to press the letter S on my keyboard. And now you'll see that I have also then split the audio clip on the main track. So by working in here, it will also affect this clip or this track here. And that's how easy I can work within Video Studio. By zooming in, I am able to make a much better edit on my audio. To adjust your volume, there are multiple ways we can do this. Let's start off with the basics. Highlight your clip, right click, audio, adjust volume. A little window will pop up and 100 obviously is 100%. If I want to increase it, I just simply click away. There is a faster way. If I can use this one here, which is the slider, I highlight it blue and pops up. I got a little window. Now I can move the volume up and down, which is a lot easier than trying to click, say, 362 times. I need to close this window first, and then I need to close this window. If I play this clip now, it's going to be quite loud, but hang on. Like I said, so loud it's distorted, and we don't want that. How do I bring this volume back down? I'm going to show you the second way. What we're going to do is the sound mixer tab here, highlight that, turn it blue. And then the windows, I'm going to get a new tab popping up. There we go. All right, quick uh, explanation here. This is the main track. This is your overlay track. This is your sound record, and this is your music track. If I was to drag this clip down to the first overlay, it would shift everything over to here. And that represents number one. If I was to drag it to number two, number two, and so on. Let's bring it back to the main track. What I want to do, I want to adjust that volume because it is quite high right now. I must make sure that my scrubber, which is this here, is at the very beginning of the clip. To do that, I will just use this little icon here, click it once, and now I can use this here to drag the volume up or down. Now, be careful, as you can see, if I'm moving this up and down, the entire track increases. However, if I drag the scrubber anywhere in the timeline and then move it up and down, it's going to place a keyframe here, and only this part of the clip, the volume is going to go up and down. And I'll show you. Let's go up. So a little square appear, which represents a keyframe. So what it's going to do now, it's going to go from the volume on this keyframe and increase it to the volume of this keyframe. If this is something you desire, great. If it's not, be careful. If you do not want that keyframe, very simple. Highlight it, left click, and just drag it up, and it just disappears. So just drag it out of the timeline itself. And there you go. That is two ways to do it. The third way is what I'm going to show you later on. To mute the audio, there's, again, multiple ways to do this. The simplistic way is, again, highlight the clip once, right-click, audio, first one here, mute. Bingo, you're done. Let's unmute that. Second option is 
right click split the audio audio and then you'll see here split the audio now what we can do we can completely remove this audio clip altogether voila now there is no more audio whatsoever in your project let's bring that back if you are trying to edit the video and the audio is constantly playing there's two ways we can eliminate that if the first time you play it and you're using the scrubber and it also creates the noise or the audio it can be annoying to turn that off settings preferences edit tab and you'll see here enable audio while scrubbing I don't like to have this personally because if I'm trying to make multiple edits constantly I'm always hearing that background noise and it can be quite annoying however you may want to do that in case you're trying to specifically pinpoint a part of the audio track that you need to edit press OK if you are working on your track and you do have that enabled instead of going up to settings to disable it for a very short period you can just simply use this little icon here which obviously says mute unmute and there you go now you've removed it as well to change the balance in your audio simply use the sound mixer icon once again over here we have the option of changing it from the left to the right wherever i place my scrubber is where the adjustment will be made so if i now move this little icon to the left you'll see a keyframe here and that would then indicate that the audio will be sitting on the left if i move it even further and i move it to the right again it will man then make a new keyframe so wherever you make the adjustment a keyframe will be formed automatically right now we are in the stereo mode and i like to be able to use the dolby surround or the 5.1 channels this is a little bit tricky we have to go into settings project properties we have to choose dvd because predominantly you're going to be using a dvd to do this i doubt you'll ever have five surround down on your telephone go into the edit tab once this little window opens up go into the compression tab in the compression tab you have audio format if you click down you'll have the option of dolby surround sound or 5.1 channels click 5.1 channels press ok if you're happy with it press ok this will now turn to surround sound and now you have the ability to move this around to anywhere you wish audio ducking is a great tool that automatically drops down the volume of music in the background as you are speaking here I have a clip in the timeline where this is the intro and all I did was added a music clip in the background in this video. As you can see the music is quite loud so what I'm going to do now I'm going to use the audio ducking feature. Go into your music track, right click, audio ducking. You can use these controls to create sensitivity and so forth. Let's leave this at the default, press OK. I will now show you that it automatically lowered the volume. So if I do the same thing again, press play. In this video, I'm going to teach you all things audio. So as I'm speaking, it has lowered the volume. Any time that I've stopped speaking, it will then increase the volume. For over here, for example, to the right. So you feel absolutely. All right. So obviously my music track is shorter than my audio track. It doesn't matter, you get the general idea. So whenever you are speaking, the volume of the music will go down automatically. When you stop, it will increase. And everything is done automatically for you. Changing the duration on your audio clip. For example, if you want your audio clip to be the same length as your main track, double click, a new option panel will open up, basic tab, and here you have the speed control. Obviously, if you speed it up or slow it down, it will change the audio. I would recommend to use instrumental audio rather than vocals otherwise it's going to sound really silly if i want to match this clip to this clip i can just simply use this little icon here and start clicking until it matches there is a simpler way i can highlight my soundtrack move my cursor to the end where it's black hold down the shift key left mouse button and click and drag easily done you have an option of eight music tracks simply go into the track manager here music track drop down menu and you've got up to eight audio tracks you want to add if for some odd reason you need one more you can use the audio track click it up and use the voice track it does the same thing 
Auto Music, what is Auto Music? It's a great tool. Basically what it does, Corel Video Studio automatically shortens the length of the audio in time with where you want it to start or the entire clip. For example, if I drag my scrubber here and I use Auto Music, the music will start where the scrubber is. I want it the entire clip. I'm gonna drag the scrubber to the beginning, highlight my clip, and then I'm gonna use this icon here called Auto Music. I'm presented with a new menu, category, song, and version. Let's do something as electronica, city night groove, and private party. I can preview it by pressing play. Alrighty then. Auto trim, have that checked because it will trim to the exact length of my clip. And then I'm just simply gonna click add to timeline and voila. It also has a fade in and a fade out. So it's perfectly in line with your project. Just before I go, I will show you something else. It's kind of neat. If you go into the sound tab here, you have an option of sound effects, multiple sound effects, funny noises, bells, whistles, people laughing and applauding absolutely for free. Triple scoop music is a paid service. I've never used it. I just quite frankly find it too expensive when there are free options available on the internet. Adding an FX filter, why would you do that? Well, in case you hear a hiss or a hum and you want to clean that up, you can do that by using the filters. Any audio track, it doesn't matter. Let's just right click here on the music track. You will see audio filter. So let's say you want to polish it or make it n nicer. We can use new blue auto polish. Click add. Now we've applied the filter to it. We can also now go into the option menu here. And this gives you lots of dials. I won't explain what these do because that's a whole different tutorial on its own. There is a second way we can do this as well. We can go into the FX filters here and you'll see an icon here called the sound FX or show audio filters. If you want to use any of these, click, drag, apply. You'll see a star here. Click it once, audio filter, new blue star. And here we go, so exactly the same way. I think the first option that I showed you was much faster. Audio fade in, fade out is done relatively easy. Highlight your clip, sound mixer icon. Go into the attribute tab, you'll see here, fade in, fade out. Just click it once, it turns blue. You will see on your timeline, a keyframe has been added to indicate that the volume from this keyframe to this keyframe will then decrease. If you move your cursor over to the keyframe, left click, hold, you can drag this keyframe anywhere you want. So in case you want the fade to start earlier or later. A good combination to use this is with a fade out on your main track or your main video. We can use something like a transition. Go fade to black, click and drag. Now your clip and the audio will fade together. Deal tutorial for you. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, an easy beginner's guide to using audio within Corel Video Studio 2022. If there is other things that you're struggling with, please leave a comment in the comment section and I'll be happy to review and see what I can do for you. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>